Sumo Digital has been producing great games for a while now, but with its latest creation, the British studio has finally taken the chance to build an entirely original game. Snake Pass offers a unique blend of physics-based slithering, pseudo-platforming action, and puzzle-solving held together with a colorful presentation and a killer David Wise soundtrack. It's great stuff. It's also available on a whole lot of platforms, including PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and of course the PC. We'll be taking a close look at all versions of the game shortly, but today we wanted to give users an idea of what to expect from a couple different versions of the game, namely Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4. With the Switch only being on the market for less than a month now, it's fair to say that a lot of players are eager for new software. What makes this release so fascinating is that it's the first time we have a multi-platform game releasing simultaneously on Nintendo Switch alongside other versions. Pretty cool. To start with, Snake Pass was built using Unreal Engine 4, and is filled to the brim with bright colorful designs that look great, but while the visuals may be highly stylized, that doesn't mean there isn't a lot happening below the surface. It's still an Unreal Engine game pushing rich lighting and complex interactions after all. The game world is packed with thick, blowing grass, great post-processing effects, and very nice animation. And each version of Snake Pass has been customized to offer the best possible experience across each respective platform. Considering the hardware differences between the PlayStation 4 and Nintendo Switch then, first impressions are rather positive for Nintendo's new console. There are visible differences though. Shadow maps, for instance, are handled slightly differently across the stage, while the depth of field effect used on PlayStation 4 is absent on Switch during gameplay, but the overall look of the game is maintained pretty well. In some cases, the Switch almost has an advantage. Take the grass textures here. The way in which grass is placed varies between PS4 and Switch, and in some scenes such as this, the grass actually appears fuller on the Switch. A curious difference. There's also a variation in the way water is handled. Water caustics are present in some area on PlayStation 4, but absent on the Switch version. It's a nice looking effect on PS4, so it's a little disappointing to see this removed on Switch but it's also a subtle enough effect that most users wouldn't even notice its absence without a direct comparison. The water ripple shader, which appears when swimming across the surface of a pool of water, is also absent on the Switch. But the most significant difference stems from rendering resolution. On PlayStation 4, we're looking at 1536 by 864, while Switch drops all the way to 1200 by 675 in docked mode. Okay, so those values are a lot lower than you might have expected, but it works out better than you would think due to Unreal Engine's excellent temporal anti-aliasing combined with the soft materials used in the game. That's the thing to keep in mind here. A lower resolution with excellent anti-aliasing can often produce a more pleasing image than a higher resolution with little or no AA. As such, the end results here really aren't bad. Now, for those looking for a higher resolution, I can at least tease here that the PS4 Pro version offers two rendering modes, both of which are higher resolution than the other console versions, but we'll take a closer look at that version shortly. Okay, so how does it look in portable mode then? Well, thanks to Sumo, we were able to get our hands on direct feed capture of the game running in portable mode, and it looks quite nice. There are minor differences present here in scene detail, but it does compare very favorably to the docked mode. Image quality is also comparable to docked mode, but when shrunk down onto the smaller Switch screen, it winds up looking a lot crisper than when you blow it up on a large TV. Of course, this capture here was taken from the patched version of the game, which should be going live very shortly. The launch version was lacking depth of field in cutscenes, for instance, but this updated release brings the effect back into play. Essentially, what we're seeing here are further refinements to the visuals being made, and considering how little time the dev team had to work with the Switch, it's nice to see this additional polish being added when possible. So when it comes to overall visual quality then, the PS4 version has the edge, but the Switch version compares rather favorably. 
I think that this is an important point to consider, the fact that an Unreal Engine game was ported so quickly over to the Switch and manages to look this nice bodes well for the future of the platform. So while we've often seen results similar to the Wii U with other games such as Splatoon 2 or Zelda, it's clear that the modern architecture and improved tool support of the Switch can really help make a difference here and ensure that more games are released for the new platform without becoming a burden for developers. Okay, so what about performance then? Both the Switch and PS4 versions of Snake Pass target 30 frames per second. And while a higher frame rate would have been preferred, no doubt, Sumo went for a more stable frame rate rather than an unstable unlocked one, as we've seen in many other games this generation. If we look at the performance on PlayStation 4 first then, we see that the game does a good job of maintaining a lock on 30 frames per second throughout. Keep in mind that Snake Pass is not a high speed platform game, and as such, it still manages to play very well at 30 frames per second. If you look over at the frame time graph, you can see that the frame times are completely consistent as well, meaning that the game does not suffer from any sort of judder or hitching or anything like that. It's very stable. This is, of course, the same target frame rate that we see on Xbox One, I should note. Now, if 30 FPS isn't doing it for you and you're looking for a 60 frames per second experience, well, you'll have to play on a PS4 Pro or the PC. Okay, so if the PS4 is 30 frames per second, how does the Switch version hold up then? Unsurprisingly, this version also targets 30 frames per second, both in portable and docked mode. Unfortunately, a small wrinkle is introduced here that presents itself only in this version of the game. My old nemesis, incorrect frame pacing. Yes, this issue returns in yet another game, but thankfully it tends to occur much less frequently than in many other offending games. This is not a Bloodborne situation. Now, considering how quickly the game was ported over to the Switch, it's likely that this issue simply slipped through, and we're hopeful that Sumo Digital will be able to correct the problem in a future patch, since performance is otherwise stable. Then we have the performance in portable mode, which turns in results rather similar to the docked mode overall. We have the same 30 FPS target with occasional bouts of bad frame pacing. Now we did notice a few sections in which performance slips a little below the 30 FPS target, but those drops are generally kept to a minimum here. The overall sense is that it runs just a hair slower in portable mode, but manages to hold reasonably close to 30 frames per second. If the bad frame pacing is corrected in both modes then, it should feel a lot better overall. Next up we have loading times, and in both instances the game performs quite well here. We were surprised to discover that it loads a couple seconds faster on the Switch versus PlayStation 4 though. Thankfully there isn't any additional loading upon death, so the game manages to maintain its momentum nicely. So that's where we're at right now then. The game is great on both Switch and PlayStation 4, but clearly some compromises had to be made in order to run on Nintendo's newest hybrid console. It's impressive that those compromises were kept to a relative minimum though, and it definitely gives us hope that future Unreal Engine games will run pretty well on the system. This game would not have happened on the Wii U, at least using Unreal Engine 4. What makes the Switch version most appealing, of course, is the ability to play the game on the go and it definitely looks great here as well. But we'll be back next time with more details on the experience of porting the game over to the Switch, as well as a full set of comparisons for every other version of the game. But that's all I have for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like, subscribe, or even follow us on Twitter. And if you're going to EGX Res this weekend, be sure to come find us. The whole Digital Foundry crew will be there at the show. But for the moment, this is John signing off.